So yeah, just to kind of walk through what's required in terms of the class. I, I didn't, um, if you're coming from Cornerstone Seminary, this is you know a little bit different and they kind of accommodated us to make it work because we wanted to be able to make it accessible to our church when I'm so glad so many you know from our church have made it out but people for working who can't just drop everything and go to seminary and so that's why we're doing obviously Saturday mornings t twice a month it's not a normal schedule for a class but in order to make that work this class you know, it's it's Cornerstone's Bibliology class, and then later it'll be its Interpretation and Hermeneutics class. But we're spreading those two classes over a whole year. And so technically, in Cornerstone's catalog, they've broken Bibliology up into two classes, like basically Bibliology A and B. So we're going to do, it's a two-unit class till December, and then in January, we're going to finish the two-unit class, and then do a three-unit uh, hermeneutics class. So that's just the way that it had to be broken up to fit with the way they do registration. And so if you want to do bibliology, it will basically go from now until February with most of December off. Okay, so that's, and then we'll do interpretation. You could do either of those classes, you know, for credit if you want, or just obviously auditing. Um, but this syllabus is for the bibliology part of the class. Okay, so the, it's technically it's two classes, but it's broken up into two quarters. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing. Uh, kind of, we had to do a lot of back and forth with like how to make it work for their registration and their schedule and their system. Uh, it, the, yeah, it's a little bit out of the box for them, and so you know we could have, that that was the compromise we came to. Um, so anyway. So with that said, I'm just calling this bibliology, but you just have to keep in mind, technically it's two, and really you should plan on doing both of them, yeah. So I see first and second quarter. Right. So, I'm slow. When does the first, quor first quarter end? Basically December, and then the second quarter. The second quarter is gonna be a lot shorter. Um, there's not gonna be that many classes for it, but then the final will be part of the second quarter, and um, some papers and things that you could do over Christmas break. So that all the work that you do over Christmas break will be part of second quarter. So it kind of evens out. So class wise now to December is first quarter and then that's done. And then Christmas break, you could do some papers and some reading and then do just like a month of classes, take a final, and then we'll start interpretation. Yeah. Like early February, basically. Okay, so that's just, once again, it's a little bit of an oddity, uh, just dealing with registration and classes and all that. So um, you could read the course description there. We're going to study the doctrine of scripture. We already talked about that. Talk about kind of the classic, you know, what we would call the classic topics in a bibliology class would be verbal, plenary, inspiration, like the words of scripture and inspired, divine revelation, supernatural illumination, the purpose and authority of scriptures, the sufficiency of scripture. So, you know, it's pretty typical um, course description. This If you're doing this class for credit, once again, it's over those two quarters, but it's a lot of reading. I mean, if, you, if you're not used to seminary. If you're used to seminary, I don't know how it compares, but um, it's like 1,300 pages of reading. Uh, you're not going to be tested on the reading. There's just a lot to read. And you're basically for the reading, what you're going to do is you're going to do just like quick summaries of the reading. And really that's for your own benefit, honestly. Um, how many, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I wish I had done this going through seminary. All the books I read, tons and tons of books. I don't remember them, you know. And if I just had like, oh, here's the highlights of this book. I read it. Here's what I really loved about it. Man, that would be a great resource for me. It's just a way of, so it shouldn't, I'm, I'm, it's not much. It's like two sentences on every chapter you read, okay. It just, it doesn't, I'm not going to grade it. It's just, do you do it? It's for your own benefit, right. So just two, it could be a quote. It could be just like, oh, this, I, I, well, honestly, I, I don't, I'm not going to check it. It's for you. Okay, so that's that's the the reading the books. I am going to oh you can see there on the required textbooks. There's where the link is for my syllabus. That's going to be constantly updated. It's kind of in progress there, um, but that's where it's going to go. Um, and then for reading, I'm going to have you Derek Brown 
Some of you may know him. He's a professor at Cornerstone. He's the academic dean. He taught this class before me, and his syllabus was really good. Uh, he, he did a lot more with, like, the historical, you know, development of these doctrines, discussing different theologians' views on these things. He's, you know, he's got his PhD. It's very academic and well-written. So I'm just going to require his syllabus as one of the books. Just read it. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of overlap, but I just feel like that'll be, he's going to say things in slightly different ways. It will, you know, really intersect well with what I'm doing. Um, and then John Frame has a book, The Doctrine of the Word of God. Uh, this fat book, which a lot of people have said is his like magnum opus. Like this, this is just like the book to get if you want to study the doctrine of scripture. So it, I, I love frame. Uh, there's just a lot of great stuff in here. Obviously it's, it's a big book. Um, so, you know, uh, when I was in seminary, man, if you don't know how to read fast, seminary will teach you, you know, I, I had one class where I think it was like a historical theology class. I think the professor's sole goal was to teach us how to read fast. He assigned like three or 4,000 pages of reading one semester for one class. And it's just like, he's like, I don't care if you remember it. I just want you to look. And it's just, he, his idea was just get you familiar with stuff. You know, not to remember it, not to, he's like, you can't, he was a librarian. That's who he was. So <laughs> that's just, that's just who he was. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, you're not going to be tested on all of this. Um, so, you know, you don't want to, if you're a slow, like, man, I'm going to read every sentence and digest it. And you, you, you won't make it through seminary. There's just a value in kind of like reading it quickly and getting things out of it. And you don't want to just zone out and ignore it. But um, anyway, so those are, and then John Piper has two books and I, I changed kind of the the reading for this class and even the, the nature of it. I feel like the historical debates about bibliology that have gone on, they're still very relevant and important. If you know church history, you know that um, the doctrine of inerrancy, right? Like the fundamentalism, liberalism debates of the 60s and that you know, like these are generations ago were these huge debates going on, like, is the Bible true? Is it supernatural? Do miracles really happen? And there's liberals and, you know, all this stuff. I don't feel like they're the sole place where the discussion is today. I feel like today we're dealing with a lot more postmodernism. You know, there's a lot of people that say they believe in the authority of Scripture, but just the way they interpret it is very different. And so I'm not, I mean, I'm not ignoring those topics, but I'm going to add some other topics and kind of broaden the discussion a little bit because I feel like in the past it was just very much, is every word of scripture inspired and debates and debates and a lot of stuff written? That's important, but I just don't think that that's, there's so much more to be said. And I just think in our day and age, there's, I feel like, um, it's not where all the discussion should be. And so I feel like Piper's two books, specifically A Peculiar Glory, um, it, I feel like it's just well, it, it's like, how does the Bible authenticate itself in dealing with people where they're at? And how does the Holy Spirit use that to show us God's glory? I mean, obviously, you know, Piper, he's all about glory anyway, but this book is kind of about the self-authentication of the scriptures. And so I feel like it's really uh, appropriate and pertinent to, especially in kind of like a postmodernistic world where you're dealing with unbelievers and, you know, they're not, yeah. So I just feel like that's good. And then reading the ba Bible supernaturally is similar. It's a little bit shorter, but also really good. So can it kind of get you into some of his thinking? Um, then there's a few articles. Um, I, yeah, you could, you, you could see them there. Um, once again, just, just read them and, you, you know, take a couple notes. All right, course objectives. I put the first one there. Grow in your love for Scripture and the lo lo love for the God of Scripture known through his word. Um, yeah, I, I hope I hope you just grow in your love of Scripture, your passion. Just I hope there's a zeal that comes out of just being in the word. Um, obviously, you know, the basic I elements of a theology of Scripture 
you know, these different doctrines of revelation, purpose, inspiration, inerrancy, authority, progressive revelation, sufficiency, canonicity, illumination, transformation, efficacy, preservation, communication, perspicuity. Those are all like a lot of those are like class. Those are like the topics we're going to go through and just um, I'm not going to hit on all of them in the same way, but I want you to be aware of those. Um, just grow in your biblical competency with the word, right? So being able to use the word to ground your assumptions and your positions on the Bible, know how to defend it, um, grow in your confidence of the authority and power and the glory of the Bible. So, um, you know, we believe that pastoral ministry grows and is rooted in confidence in the word and not just obviously our own opinions. So just having and even knowing the difference between what are things I can be confident about because scripture's clear on them and what are things I shouldn't be confident about because it's not clear in the word or it's just my own opinion or whatever. So confidence in the word. Um, understanding of how the different doctrines relate to each other. So, you know, we believe that the Bible is all interconnected. So we hope you could see some of those things. Yeah, you know, just sensitivity to God's word personally, just your own heart, that this isn't just academic, but that you're encouraged and convicted as you read the word. And then as seminary, as you know, as a seminary class, just the work and the rigor of reading and writing and participating uh, just kind of grows you um, just through kind of the hard work and managing your time and, and all of that good stuff. Okay, so in terms of the class um, attendance, that's pretty, you know, pretty obvious. Just 10% of your grade is just attending, being involved, not watching YouTube during the class, you know, basic stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I, sh I guess I should probably do an attendance sheet every week. I didn't. Um, but no, I mean, I, I put in there. It, I mean, it really depends on the reason, you know, um, but in terms of a grade percentage, yeah. But if there's, I had somewhere in the syllabus, it says that um, if you have personal or family emergencies or ministry emergencies, you know, um, you know, exceptions can be made. Uh, the second part of it is what, what I'm calling pastoral interaction. So if you're not part of our church, you know, part of this is go talk to your pastor about it. Um, you know, just I, I have in there like an hour per lecture. So every two weeks, you know, having some time with your pastor. Um, if I'm your pastor or Justin, you know, it could be one of us. And, and this time after class could be part of that or, or a lot of it. And, and if your pastor, if you're going to Cornerstone and your pastor can't do that, we could, we could work it out as, as this is part of our time. Um, so, yeah, that, that's something we're trying out where we're trying to make this class much more, um, yeah, like as part of the local church, that there's a connection there and not just like you're going to seminary, but it's part of what you're doing as part of the church. Um, reading, as I said, that's, there's a lot of reading. It's a big part of your grade. It's just a completion. You did it or you didn't. You're going to turn in, as I said, these, um, we're just calling them primary point outlines, so just two, two sentences for each chapter in a book and each article, just three sentences, you know, it could be anything. And you're just going to turn those in like you did it. If you did it, you get 100 percent of that grade. OK, and um, yeah, you don't have to do one or a couple of them. But yeah, just read through that. You indicate how much of the reading you did do on the last mm -hmm. day. So you could see that there's, you know, there's first quarter books and articles and second quarter. Obviously, the first quarter ones will be due. I think it's like December 2nd. Um, so there's that. All right. The next one is what I'm calling position papers. Um, I, I, I adopted a lot of this from Derek Brown's syllabus where he just had like one research paper. But I was really benefited in seminary by doing shorter uh, non-research papers where they're just biblical papers like the bible is the only kind of required source now you could do other sources and do some research some of the topics you know probably would be better but these are just short papers okay two to four pages um and i want them to be just kind of like 
clear, sharp, biblically reasoned, you know, your reasoning for a position. Um, you could see here, I want you to write simply, clearly, logically, winsomely. Um, you don't have to quote, but if you do follow, you know, the, the Chicago Manual of Stye, Turabian, you know. Um, so I say you're going to form a thesis statement regarding a topic and then reason for it from Scripture. Uh, just just kind of read through this. Think of objections, refute them. All right, so you could look on the next page, and I listed all the different topics and sample thesis statements, okay? So basically two of two short papers on one, of, you know, basically one of these each quarter. Are you with me? And so just take, for example, prophecy. So we did that today, right? So here's a, a sample thesis statement. Prophecy is clear and direct communication from God, which isn't subject to change and isn't fallible. So I, I just came up with that sentence. I'm not saying it's the best sentence. I, ran, I did these really quickly. So you could use that one, but you may want to nuance it, especially as we go through the class and like, ah, I think I want to argue for something a little bit differently than that. That's okay, you know, if it's on one of these topics. But you're going to come up with like a thesis statement and then just defend it from Scripture. Walk through passages, kind of like what we're doing in class in a sense. And I'll say this, it's interesting, as a church, we are um, affirming, you, you guys for, uh, who are part of our church know Eric and Ron, we're affirming them as elders, and part of that process is we're having them go through this affirmation. And so part of what I'm doing here is kind of based on that process, like what kind of things do we want them to know, and what's helpful to get there? So like a research paper, that's helpful, but honestly, to be a pastor, you don't have to be an academic right? But you got to know your Bible. There's value in academics, but you got to know your Bible. And so you being able to, like, I, I think these short position papers will be helpful to you just in ministry, in life, right? Like, I've reasoned through this. I know these passages. Um, I could defend these, uh, these statements. So, like, you could see there, I have, I don't know how many sentences I came up with, 20, let's say, or so statements there. Like, at some level, like, the purpose of this class this is a systematic theology class. Those 20 sentences are a big part of, like, what you're learning in this class, right? Just, like, those ideas. And so you're going to write papers on a couple of them, well, four of them over the course of a year. And then the final, which won't be till February, I'm going to, it's just going to be essay questions. And they're basically going to be, I'm going to pick some number of these and say, defend this. Right, and you got three hours to like basically write. Not, it's not going to be as big as the two to four page paper, but like let's say a page, you know, on, on whichever random ones of these I pick. So you know, just basically, I want you to know the scriptures that kind of come behind these statements. And it's going to be open Bible test that you know, and that's and that is um, it's like I said, it's in February, like after we've gone through the whole class. Um, yeah. Is that what your question was? Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's 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 open Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, once again, it's I I don't think, you know. So as you go through the class, as we're kind of going through these topics, you know, just jot, just keep your notes. Like, oh, here's some key verses I think are behind this and this and that. Um, you know, I'm not going to do. Derek did like daily quizzes. I'm not into that. Um, the, the, none of the tests are going to be on the reading, you know, it's just basically, um, yeah, do you know, do you know your Bible? So that's the final exam. There's extra reading. If you want extra credit, there's the policy on late assignments, like severe cases of whatever grading scales, pretty standard. And then there's a bibliology that, which again, I'm just so thankful. I, I basically, Derek Brown, all those resources, um, he put all those in there, did just a great job coming up with the syllabus. So I've kind of modified it to kind of fit more who I am, but that's the gist of it. Okay, so you, so you with me? Um, it's, I mean, if you're doing it for credit, it's a class, right? It takes, it takes work, but I've, I've tried to focus the work on, I mean, the reading and the papers are the majority of it, right? Um, beyond just kind of class and interaction. And so I, I think these, 
I've been reading through these books and I think they'll be a blessing to you. I think they're encouraging those books and articles and, and the papers. Um, I don't know. For me, it was always one of my, my favorite paper in seminary that I wrote, two of them, where this was the assignment. And just it's just in the word, just reasoning from word. It, it's, you know, there's a place for like go to the library, pull all these sources and do this big research paper. But I think this will be a little bit easier, but I think more beneficial just to, for you to kind of be in, in the word. And whatever topics you pick to write your four papers on, you won't have to study those for the exam. You'll just know those. And then the other ones you just want to get more familiar with. So, all right. Any, any questions in terms of kind of, in terms of a class? So once again, you'll get a grade for each half of the, for each quarter of the class. So it'll be based on the attendance and reading for the first quarter, um, the papers for the first quarter, and then the second quarter, the first quarter won't have an exam. Okay. So I'm, or maybe I could think about changing that, but I wasn't planning on it. Well, it would make it easier because I would just do half the topics for each. But I just that just came to me. But for now, I was planning on doing that second quarter. So, you, so for the final, um, you said that it would be some sort of question based off of uh, these one of these sample sample things. Uh, and so, throughout the school year or semester, we should to be properly prepare. We should be familiarizing ourselves with. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what the syllabus goes through. So I'm pulling those, those topics are what the class is about, right? So for example, you just look at um, Revelation there, right? That was the, today's lecture. Those two statements came right out of those, you know, the lecture and then prophecy. So th th we did those two today. Um, so you might want to kind of brush up on it. The reading will reinforce some of those things as well. Um, and I'll probably, honestly, when we get to the end, I might even limit it down a little bit. Um, I, have to, I have to think about that, you know, but like, I don't know, we got like 20 sentences. I might say, here, study from these. These are the main ones that I, you really should know. But the paper could be obviously any of these. So on the paper, it says there's uh, two papers that are mm -hmm. To this, no, but these are suggested. Like this is what I'm expecting. If you want to do something else, just check with me. You know, um, but those are the topics that are kind of like the the subject of the class, and then those thesis statements are kind of like the main idea for each topic. As I was thinking about it, but yeah, if you want to do something different, just talk to me. If it's about the Bible, I'll probably say yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you want to volunteer? No. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I've, I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, so, I'm, I'm doing it with the first quarter. Uh-huh. Um, so, I'm still on the first quarter stuff. But yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. All right. Any, anything else? Exciting. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. For sure. All right. Yeah. I mean, I know there's kind of just personal questions about like, oh, should I do this for credit or not? For some of you, you haven't decided. Let's, you know, we'll be talking this week. If you haven't registered, register this week. You know, um, apply and then register and. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this class. Can we call you for questions too? <laughs> 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 <laughs>